Hey guys, what's up? In the previous videos, we've learned how to work with lights and materials using Enscape. And in this last video, we will learn how to use the Enscape's assets to produce a nice composition with our scene and also to render the final image. So Enscape offers some really nice assets that we can use, which are basically 3D models that are already configured with materials and everything we need to place them in the scene. To insert these assets, we have to click up here in the asset library. And here you can see that there are many interesting objects that we can use. And here there are some search filters that we can use. So we can browse within categories or also tags. And for our scene, we can browse within the accessories. And maybe we can choose some specific tag, for example, kitchen. And here I'll choose some random object just for testing. For example, we can place this nice Italian coffee maker. I'll click here. And as you can see, we now can basically place this 3D object as if we were placing a normal object here in SketchUp. So I'll choose here any place and basically click. And we can see the result here in real time. And we can also notice that the objects are normally very well modeled and with a nice material setup. So I'll try to put other objects here in our scene to make it more interesting. I'll go back to my asset library. I'll also hide here my default tray so we have more space. You can notice that we can also search for objects by their name. So for example here, I will type flower. Okay, so I have some interesting results here. I will choose this object here, so I'll click. Now I'll place it here in the scene. And as you can see, it's too big for this space. So we can treat this object as if it were a normal object here in Enscape. So I'll click on my select button. I'll select the object. I'll click here in the scale function and we can decrease the size of these flowers. Okay, so now it's fine. I can now move it a little bit to the right. So you can see that it's very easy to place and transform objects here using the Enscape's asset library. I will now place some objects outside my scene. So I will once again click in the asset library button. This time I will click here in this cross so that I can start again with my search process. Maybe I can now search for the vegetation category and maybe I can choose some interesting bushes here to place outside. I'll try maybe this one here. So I'll click. Now I will take a look outside my scene. Okay, maybe I can put it here and it's very small. So I'll press the S key, I'll select it. I'll use the scale to make it bigger. And I can make some copies now using the move and the control key, like normal objects here in SketchUp. I can now place them a little bit away from the door. And always it's important to take a look at our view because that's what matters for the composition process. And I can see that they are here appearing behind the door. Okay. So of course you can go on and place other assets here to make this image more interesting but I'm happy already with this result and I can basically now produce my final rendering. But before I would like to give a few tips so that the final image gets even better. First, we will open once again our visual settings up here. Okay, and as you probably can remember here, we can make some really interesting adjustments for our final image. We could play with the exposure control to make this image brighter or darker. We can explore here in the image tab, the highlights, the shadows. So of course you can play around with all these values to get a nice result. We could also tweak the saturation values so that the colors get stronger or weaker. We could change the color temperature. So feel free to explore all this parameters, but of course we will take a better look at them in further lessons. For now, what I would really suggest that we could change would be here in the sky tab. We can modify here this white ground source. This parameter here refers to the image that is placed in the background of our scene. 
and for now there is just this gray horizon which is not really attractive. So I will change this option to another one. We can choose for example forest and now we have a 360 degree image placed all around our scene with an image of a forest and we can rotate this image till we get an interesting result. So I will just play around with this image here, maybe something around here. So we have now some mountains appearing, making a nice composition with this grass and also the bushes that we've placed here. And now before rendering the final image, we have to check the size of the image that we will render. And we can see here in output that the resolution of the image is set to be full HD, which is a good size normally. But for this exercise, I would like to produce an image to be posted in Instagram. So in this case, it would be better if we could basically change this resolution to a custom one. And here we can choose a square image format. So I'll change here to 2048 per 2048. And this gives us a square image with a good quality, more suitable to the Instagram platform. And one final step that it's also very important is to go back to the main tab. And here underneath, you can see that we are working with a certain rendering quality. For now, the setting that we've been using is the high one which is actually a very good setting to be chosen when we are just editing our model and working around with our SketchUp scene. But before producing the final rendering, would be interesting to drag the slider to the right till we get this ultra rendering quality and this will deliver the best quality for the final image. I normally choose the high rendering quality when I'm still working with the model but when I finally finish and I need to produce the final rendering, it's always better to use this ultra rendering mode since it will be the best quality possible. And it's also important to say that if we would like to see the correct format of the image being displayed here in the Enscape window, we can click this button called Save Frame. So in our case, it is displaying this square format that we've chosen for Instagram. And now finally, we can click here in the screenshot icon up here. Now we can choose a place to save the image. And I will just choose any folder here in my computer. We can also choose the file extension here. So for this exercise, I will just choose the JPEG image, which is this very popular extension. And I will rename this file as test render. And now I can just hit the save button. Okay, so now just after a few seconds, we have a very interesting image with natural light and reflective materials also with some assets that we downloaded directly from the Enscape's asset library. And of course, throughout our course, we will learn many other Enscape's features and resources that will probably enhance our renders. But for now, I'm pretty much happy with my result, considering that we just made some few adjustments to our SketchUp's model and we got a very interesting result after all.